much, uh, but I, I must say that one request, I, I'm not sure how much the uh, organizers have articulated what their alternatives are, but I must say that one thing that has been consistent through the years is that government should cut significantly the cost of governance. I'm also not sure how much that has been done, but we'll get back to you um, hopefully soon. Let me get to uh, Dr. Momale here. A lot of appeal has gone in asking the organizers to sheath their sword. Now, even if that is unable to achieve a complete halt of the protest, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it has managed to whittle it down what it could have been because a lot of groups have pulled out, a lot of appeals have come in and out. But if the protest does go on, you know, regardless of um, the scale of it, how do we proceed and where do we go from here to ensure that there's no breakdown of law and order? Yeah, and thank you very much and thank you to Prof for putting some of the issues uh, on, on a contextual uh, background. When we are talking about ADR, Alternative Disputes Resolution, it's a wide range of opportunities and options that are available to society, to people, to engage with. It's a matter of different types of meetings where it is done peacefully, amicably, uh, using self-respecting approaches where people sit around on the same table to discuss, to dialogue, to negotiate without any party feeling superior to the other party. And I think that is the most important aspect of alternative dispute resolution. For example, when we compare to the judiciary, where a judge sits on a high table and then you are an accused and you are a defendant. In the case of alternative dispute resolution, there is no, you know, those sort of formalized structures. There is no, this one is the litigant, this one is the defender. No, it is parties that have a common issue at stake. And they have come together on a level playing ground, irrespective of the numbers of any of the parties of the position they hold. They just come to the same table and then they, they, everybody comes to the same level and then they negotiate amicably in a very friendly manner. And I think this is what is very important about the ADR process. That's why we call it the ADR spectrum meaning that it is a very wide range of options and opportunities. But the key thing is that it is a level playing ground, it is friendly, and it is done in a manner that the end result is a win-win situation. <laughs> Unlike in litigation where you will have a, a winner and a loser, in the case of ADR and this kind of dialogue mechanisms, the outcome is always a win-win situation. And everybody and his constituents go home very happy. Okay. And this is what, what, what we, we are advocating in this situation. Now, coming back to the, to the current context, I think, like you rightly said, a lot of Nigerians, not only from the public sector, not only from the government, religious leaders, traditional uh, rulers, community-based organizations, women-based groups, everybody has come to caution those people that want to go on the path of the pro, uh, protest to come back so that together we can sit and explore the issues and situations. Of course, everybody, including the government, has have acknowledged that the situation is precarious. The economy is biting hard. Uh, many other aspects of governance have been challenged. The insecurity is quite a big problem across the country. All of these things, it's not just the fault or the guilt of one institution or one group or over a small period of time. These are cumulative issues that have a local context, a national context, a regional context, because the entire sub-Saharan Africa, and particularly the Sahel, is challenged. So in, in, in this context, a single country will find it very difficult to address these issues. And then there is the global issue. We have the global uh, challenges, mm. the economic meltdown, which was preceded by the COVID, which affected the global economies. And the, the proliferation of small arms and light weapons throughout the sub-Saharan Africa, and particularly the Sahel, 
with very low level of education. That has been a very cumulative process over the last 30, 40 years. We have a large array of uneducated Nigerians with limited economic opportunities. And our industrialization and energy sectors have not performed up to expectations. So we want these people to understand that these issues are not just a one-off issue. They are triggered, yes, by certain aspects of the economy, but nonetheless, they are also a cumulative effect and they cannot be addressed overnight or through protest. So what do we need to do? Like you said, yes, there of course, we believe that most Nigerians will adhere to these calls, but it's not surprising to see few other people who will say we still want to express our own. Now, what we like you let's mention, what we want to see from these people, just like uh, the DG just mentioned, come out and let we know you. Link up with the appropriate institutions of the state, including the security agencies, the various information uh, communication agencies. Let you negotiate. It should give you a side because most of these demonstrations are done in specific areas. The right of Nigerians on access to path uh, on the highways should not be obstructed. Mm. The right of Nigerians to go to the market should not be obstructed. The right of Nigerians to go to their places of work should not be affected. So you need to identify specific areas where you go and assemble to peacefully demonstrate. And the Nigeria security agencies should allow this. They should not stop this. Whichever group or group of Nigerians that come out and said, we are this group of Nigerians, and this is the nature of our organization, and these are the nature of the people that will embark in this demonstration. We know them. They are our members. We, are, we, we can guarantee uh, their credibility. We can guarantee that these are not you know, miscreants mm -hmm. that will go and create havoc. So we are taking responsibility over our demonstration. And they are known. Then the security agencies will say, fine, with this clear identification, this area and this area are very good public spaces for you to go and assemble. Mm -hmm. And then they should go to such areas, assemble and organize their demonstrations in a peaceful and harmonious manner. Again, with clearly defined goals, with clearly defined uh, things they will ask. I think if we have this process, then we'll able, we will be able to see that these demonstrations are organized in a peaceful and well-coordinated manner. Again, with clear demands. And these demands, the leadership will now engage the appropriate organs of government to table these demands, to negotiate these demands. And we believe that the outcome will be very helpful, possibly in shaping future policies or current policies of government that will be, added, be able to contribute in addressing this. But to add to what uh, the DG of uh, the Institute of Peace and Conflict Resolution said, many of these things have already been discussed. And there are ongoing consultations with various groups. And there are emerging opportunities already on the ground, which if, I've, which if this group of Nigerians will now continue to engage government, I think we can be able to make progress in transforming crop production, which is one of the major sources of the hunger, in such a way that within the next few years, we will see a massive improvement in crop production, in such a way that Nigeria will be self-sufficient in terms of cereals, tubers, root crops, and other important food items that we need for our day-to-day -day survival. You can see the crisis with the vegetables. Just imagine tomatoes. Mm. What happened? What happened to the production system? Let's review it and see how did it work. Happily on the energy sectors, we are beginning to see private refineries coming on board. The president just signed and addressed that controversy over supply of crude oil to Angote refinery. We believe this is a huge opportunity. In fact, we can negotiate and say that, look, Nigeria has its own local domestic consumption quota. Why must we sell it at, an, at the international price? For example, Nigerians can demand this oil is our resources mm -hmm. rather than selling it to these Let's deal with refineries. The, the yes. At home first. yes. What used to happen in the 1970s, in the 1980s, when we were enjoying the cheap oil, is because the Nigerian quarter of the crude 
was sold to NNPC at a very low price. Okay. And then they are able to refine and sell to Nigerians at a lower price. We can negotiate this, for example. We will now have from these refineries, if they, they are telling us that the Potakot and Wari refineries are being rehabilitated and they will soon revert to production. If we have this, let's say, even if it is these three refineries, there is a multiplier effect. Gas supplies will improve. Mm -hmm. uh, tar for construction of our highways will be readily available. Other products like petrochemicals for our fertilizer and blending plants will be readily available. So we'll see a huge transformation within the agriculture, within energy, within uh, the petroleum supply sectors. So these are opportunities for young Nigerians to explore, to study, and to table it before the government in a constructive manner, not necessarily through protests and demonstrations. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mumali.